My name is Liz Hillen. I am a clinical marketing uh, consultant for SPS and a certified prosthetist orthotist. And I have David Hughes here, one of our partners from Autobach. David, if you could tell the group who you are and what your responsibilities are with Autobach. I am a certified prosthetist orthotist. I work in the professional and clinical services here at Autobach. Spend most of our days doing continuing education credits, to classes, whether it be virtually now or troubleshooting, uh, cooperative care, whatever is needed to support them. Nice. In what ways has your clinical team helped the field? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, our education team headed by Aideen Curran, she started what's called Experts on Demand while the pandemic was out. And we're different members from different segments of our team will, you know, whether it be a C leg or a C brace, do a online presentation. And you can then, even now they're, lo they're on our website under the education portal, and you can uh, watch that and take a quiz at the end and get free CBU credits as well. Right now, it's a really good opportunity for people to do that. Well, and for those that are watching this and do not know, in addition to the long established collaboration and partnership that we've had with Autobach here at SPS, we have also added some microprocessors to our portfolio, which includes the C-Leg, the Kinevo, and the Meridium. So that, you know, part of the collaboration that we have to support clinicians who require assistance, and we do that in collaboration with Autobach. Let's talk about the Meridium and tell us some key features that you really like and how it differs to some of the technologies that are out there. We have two microprocessor feeds. We have the Empower, which is the only powered prosthesis on the market, which used to be the Bion, and it was developed into the Empower and it's the only powered propulsion unit available. And then we have the Meridium, which in my opinion is really the only true microprocessor on the market. There are a lot of feet that have a carbon fiber platform base that adds a microprocessor angle to it. When you look at the realities of the design of the Meridium, it is just uncomparable in microprocessor control. So it has a four axis kinematics. It allows for a standing stop at any any position to gravity. This foot will flatten out gravity, not to the ground. So you have what is called a standing stop or in, in orthotics, we call it an up stop or a dorsiflexion stop where you can lean against it. And then it has required to then release into swing. The foot must be moving forward. It has a gyroscope and an accelerometer on board or its orientation in space and how fast it's going. And then that releases the ankle from the 90 degree stop to 10 and a half degrees beyond neutral, whatever the floor is, if that range is available. On stairs, actually, it'll open up to 14 and a half degrees. And this right. thing knows the difference between this motion of a stair and a sure. ramp. And it can tell you so it'll know. And the, the incredible thing I think about stairs to me, which blows my mind still, once it knows it's on a stair, it locks out plantar flexion. Ambulating amputee will let their foot hang off the edge of the stair. You do that and the foot can plantar flex, it's just going to go like that and you're going to slip off the edge of the stair. Once it knows it's on a stair, it locks out plantar flexion, opens up dorsiflexion to the entire 14 and a half degrees, and then changes to a separate dorsiflexion resistance. Cool thing is for them to get out of that mode, all they have to do at the last step is just take a slightly longer stride step. And then it says, okay, I'm off the stairs. I would say you wanted to drive a car. You could put it in a lock mode so it wasn't moving as you, you don't want to hit the brake and have it stop two seconds later. You put it in other modes or climb a ladder or whatever, or even put it in a freeze, like elliptical mode so you could exercise it and you're not pressing against the resistance of a hydraulic cylinder. So are you saying the patient is able to make some changes to their foot, maybe programming? When I say you, I usually think about uh, the practitioner, but that's a very good point. So the, the software is, is easy for the practitioner and walks you through just like a seesaw. That's great. And in terms of patient use. So what are some of the things that the patients are reporting back? Patients really most mentioned to me though, beyond the adjustability of it is the security of it. Because mm -hmm. the, another thing that really blows my mind is that this thing in real time knows that 90 degrees. So if you normally, if you come to a curb or what I, I've even used, like an, I'll use, you know, I'll put on a quarter and I'll have them walk and they'll hit the ball of the foot on it. And like, there's nothing there because it knows to come to 90 degrees of vertical to wherever the foot was, mm -hmm. even if it's there, so there's 90, but then it just opens up to the 10 and a half. So they walk right across it. So normally you're male in the morning and there's a curb that has a, a lip on it or they hit barriers and they go over it. They would normally push their knee into hyperextension mm -hmm. or if they're standing, say on, they're up a hill 
and they're standing there and they have a standing stop, they can literally in that position do a 180 degree about face and they have that lock instantaneously. It is intuitive. I just can't say enough about it. So it takes great. the it takes the effort, the energy that the patient has to put into it, stabilize themselves going uphill and having to do like a switch back up the hill. They can go directly up the hill or directly down the hill. One feature I think I didn't mention, there is a metatarsal where the metatarsal axis that that actually uh, comes up. So when the when the foot comes forward and they hit the toe and that mm -hmm. toe breaks, then what it does is you've come to 10 and a half degrees and then it plantar flexes slightly about three to four degrees, not in a propulsion but to limit the drop off that you would have of the center of, of gravity. We, we love having the Meridium on, in our portfolio. The sea leg's been in the field for since the mid 1990s. They all remember when it came out, amazing technology, the most researched technology in the field with regard to microprocessors. We've seen sea leg three, sea leg four, We've seen Kinevo, Genium, X3, and the changes that have been made for the practitioners out there that haven't had an opportunity to use it yet. What are some of the differences that they'll see in the technology? People that don't know, to be able to compare the Sea Lake 3 to other units because of the way it worked. And the way it worked was you had to get a 70% toe load and have an extension moment. And that released the knee to swing. But if you say you opened up the refrigerator door and you backed your prosthesis leg out of the way, to open the door and maybe even pull back a little to avoid the door, it could release an unwanted situation. Mm -hmm. And it, it really is a genium without the, and, or, or X3, without the electronic pylon. This thing has in it now is, a, again, like the Meridium or microprocessors, it has a gyroscope and an accelerometer in it. Each knee has a little bit different. Canevo, you do it unweighted, X3, and an unequal gait pattern. Basically, if you don't have flexion, their knee will, the leg will go into flexion and then put the weight line posterior, and then the knee could creep into flexion from just weight. That's right. And essentially, in terms of how the microprocessor is working too, would that essentially also cause the technology to respond abnormally? So say even in, um, in the calibration point that we mentioned, that knee is moving, or the mm -hmm. knee is bent, or the right. knee is at some crazy angle, it'll have a big red X that says you can't calibrate because you're out of the range of what would be considered normal. That's just a message to all of our clinicians out there that are watching this, that alignment is everything. Take the time to get that alignment correct. We know from working with these different technologies that if the alignment is not correct, then we're going to see some abnormalities and how the technology is functioning. So thank you for explaining that. That's great. I, I appreciate that. The sea leg itself, is it waterproof? So basically it is waterproof in that the electronics have been tested to go to three foot of water, one meter for a half an hour, but it is not anodized parts. It is not a hardened water corrosive material. So you could fall in a pool, you could, you know, go into something but you're going to want to rinse that with fresh water to get any algae, chlorine, whatever off the device. And as far as the Knevo, um, this is a, a really unique technology. I personally love it because um, it has yeah. so many different stages in programming for the patient. Mm -hmm especially going through the rehab stages. K2 population, this is the first K2 microprocessor technology. Can you, David, explain how this technology works? When I came out of school, I was at, working at a veterans hospital in Loma Linda, California. And in 2002, uh, three, when we first you know, got a chance to do it, the sea leg was considered experimental, a thing that they didn't want to pay for. And so over time, the sea leg, as we were just talking, has become the standard of care. There's over 60 plus studies. Sure. It is what everybody compares microprocessors to. It is the basis of comparison. It is what everyone's trying to reach. It is gold standard. Thank you. It, well, it, yeah, it, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, yes, it is the gold standard. It is what everyone is striving to be. Now the Kinevo has taken this one to another level for another population, which is the K2 population. The Kinevo is the lightest microprocessor on the market. It is a stance only device. We used to have a product called the Compact, which yes. was a, a stance only. This is like a compact on steroids because what this thing has is four modes. So as the patient either progresses in their treatment or, which many people do, they decline 
and their capabilities over time, you can change the modes. There are four modes within this that you can change. So the modes, there's mode A. And so this thing is basically a, a lock knee, a, a manual locking knee that doesn't release into swing. It's just mm -hmm. a locked out knee, but because it knows its orientation of space and where it's going and the pressure is through the, there is a electronic pylon with this as well. So it knows torque, whether on the heel and toe and how much, all the patient has to do is push their rear end backwards. And if they have at least 15% of their body weight on it mm -hmm. and it's moving in a, in the, the angle of the pylon and the unit to, to succumb to that, it will sit down. So basically it will release into seating a, a supported sitting I, without having to pull a manual lock release on the knee. And even if you did, say it was a manual lock, once you release it, it's a door hinge. This thing has supported sitting. So just like with a C leg, as you sit down, it has resistance that you can support yourself seated. With this, the resistance actually increases. As, so as the further it's bent, the more the resistance is to support the patient so they don't plop into the chair. Mode A is uh, just that. It's a manual locking knee, basically, that you can sit down without having to utilize the hands and has supported. Mode B, it then releases into swing. But the way it releases, now there's other units on the market that still work off a tow load. Mm -hmm. And you'll look to a tow load and you hit a tow load, but the tow load is set. And they yes. must cross a level or whatever, and they must... It's a set point. With a Kinevo, no matter what their prior settings are, there is no settings. It just needs to hit a toe load for that step and come off 10% mm -hmm. and it releases it. That's great. Mode B, you have a knee that now is straight. When they're standing, it's locked. But as they step and take a step and come off the toe, it releases into swing and they have all the benefits said uh, of, of sitting as, as previously mentioned and some of the other benefits. Mode B plus is the same as B, but what it does is it now allows 10 degrees of stance flexion to basically get them prepared for walking in with stance flexion in their gait, but it locks out at 10 degrees. They cannot get that thing to bend beyond 10 degrees. So they don't feel like they're getting that, you know, some people feel like the knee bends twice in space. If you come off a polycentric knee, that's right. locked heel strike and all of right. a sudden the knee is bending a little, depending on the alignment. People don't like that, right? They feel unsafe. Right. Then if you go to mode C, it is basically a stance only C leg. It doesn't have swing control. So you can, the, the heel rise is going to become high and it's going to come off the ground higher. And mm -hmm. therefore it's going to take longer to come forward and mm -hmm. they may not get it fully straight when they want to put weight on it. It doesn't have swing control. It doesn't have swing flexion limiting rise. So eventually you can walk fast enough that the heel rise will be too much. And at that point, you are a sea leg candidate. Those transitional periods of when to change that programming and explaining those new freedoms of movement that the patient will now experience process too that I really like because it's a, a great way to follow up with the patient, follow up with the PT and make sure that that patient's transitioning nicely with the um, programming and technology um, and getting the most out of the technology, but aligning it with where their activities of daily living are as well. Excellent stuff. Well, David, this has been a joy to sit here and talk with you at a AOPA Virtual Live 2020. I love your background too. It's awesome. It makes me feel like we're in we're in the conference hall, even though we're not. Thank you. We Again, this is just a great collaboratory effort on our end to support your amazing products and also help with the education on these products. And I appreciate you coming here into our virtual booth at AOPA and having this great conversation about amazing technology and part of the SPS product portfolio. Uh, we're excited to support it. Again, thank you so much. And we look forward to uh, working with you out in the field with many more success stories. Well, thank you. Thank you for allowing <laughs> me to be here. Thank you for allowing me to share some information about these wonderful products. And as you know, and I hope you know, as with all of our customers of uh, Autobach, SPS included that I am at your disposal. So if I'm Thank you. any assistance at any time, I'm going to support you. I love it. Thank you so much, David.